along uh, we'll have a presentation by dr skeen singh uh, various patterns on ffa then uh, ffa patterns in diabetic retinopathy vascular occlusions cscr armd and posterior uveitis and conclude with the uh, discussion and uh, any queries and questions so as we go along seven seven as we go along uh, the initial uh, presentations or uh, descriptions of ffa have been found in uh, papers by charles and flocks in 1958 and then it was used uh, clinically by novotny and elvis in 1961 basically fluorescent angiography is a visualization of fluorescent dye in the intravascular and extracellular spaces or luminance is basically the emission of light from any source other than the higher temperature and there is absorption of uh, electromagnetic radiation leading the electrons to get elevated to higher energy state and when they come to the uh, lower energy state by spontaneous decay uh, they emit fluorescence uh, that is in the visible spectrum called luminous luminescence fluorescence is basically a luminescence which is maintained only by continuous excitation and thus when the emission stops the excitation also stops so it is a uh, dye the chemical formula is c20h10o5n2 na2 it's a orange red crystalline hydrocarbon low molecular weight with high solubility in water which allows rapid diffusion intravascular fluorescence is bound to plasma albumins nearly 80% and the free albumin uh, free fluorescent which is about 20% is available for fluorescence it readily diffuses through the chorea capillaris but doesn't diffuse through the retinal vascular endothelium and rpe it is eliminated from the body 24 within 24 hours through the kidneys so there is a internal uh, inner and outer re blood retinal barriers which are impermeable to fluorescence and chorea capillaris which is freely permeable to fluorescence sodium fluorescein gets excited by a light energy between uh, 465 to 4, uh, 490 nanometer which is in the blue range and the fluorescence is in the green wavelength that is 520 to 530 nanometers so fluorescein uh, as uh, a dye is available as ampules uh, as 5% 10% or 20% solutions so there is a excitation uh, range of wavelength and then the emission which is in the green uh, wavelength so you have to put a exciter filter as a and a barrier filter so before uh, you undertake fluorescence angiography because it is a invasive procedure so you need to instruct the patient that he should be empty stomach or at least nil orally for 3 uh, hours before the procedure and we take about uh, 45 minutes or so for dilatation of pupils uh, that the test itself takes not more than 10 to 15 minutes and with digital fluorescein angiograms we are able to report it immediately so we must instruct the patient that he should not uh, panic when there is yellow discoloration of the skin or he passes dark or uh, dark red or green color urine for a day and the vision remains blurred for a few hours and he should report immediately if there is any rash or reaction so informed consent is a must because we can get systemic complications and uh, these days uh, it may become a medical legal, uh, legal issue later on as we inject the dye uh, there can be uh, the filling of the uh, blood vessels which can be seen in various phases of the normal angiogram starting with the choroidal phase arterial phase late arterial venous phase uh, early arterial venous phase late arterial venous phase then the recirculation and the late phase the arm to choroid time is 10 to 15 seconds and if it is more than 30 seconds it is abnormal the complete choroidal filling takes about 3 to 5 seconds if it is more than 5 seconds again it is normal abnormal and the uh, arterial venous transit time is 8 to 12 seconds so roughly in about 30 seconds the uh, initial phases of angiogram are over so firstly what you will uh, see on a angiogram is the choroidal flush or a choroidal fluorescence which is uh, uh, 10 to 12 seconds after injecting 
It is faint, patchy, and irregularly scattered throughout the posterior pole. And within 10 seconds, the angiogram becomes extremely bright for 5 seconds because of the choroidal flush. If the ciliorenal artery is present, this, is, this gets filled up in this phase of the angiogram. Then 1 to 3 seconds after the choroidal flush, uh, the central retinal artery fills up and consequently the retinal arterioles, pre-capillary arterioles, capillaries, post-capillary venules and finally the veins uh, they fill up. In the early arteriovenous phase, the smaller vessels uh, uh, get filled up and then the veins along their walls leading to a laminar flow. So this is uh, what you will see as a laminar flow and as the vascular flow is faster in the center of the vessel, the fluorescent sticks to the uh, walls and leads on to this vascular flow. But as the whole of the ves uh, venous uh, structures they fill up, the, that laminar flow is lost. And the uh, perifovial capillary network is best visualized at about 20 to 25 seconds after the injection of the dye. Fovea appears hypofluorescent because of the absence of blood vessels in the FZ and also due to blockage of background choroidal fluorescence because of the tall RP cells. Then comes the recirculation phase which is about 30 seconds after the dye injection and fluorescence within the vessels this, it starts to reduce and there is a lower circulation, uh, lower concentration of fluorescence which keeps recirculating. In late phases the retinal vessels they empty by about 10, uh, 10 minutes, staining of the Brooks membrane, choroid and sclera result from diffuse background fluorescence and the disc remains hyperfluorescent in even the late films due to staining. As with any other procedure, uh, fluorescent angiography, uh, you can also get some complications because of the injection of the dye. It can excavate it and lead on to a local tissue necrosis. So you should put a scalp vein and inject some uh, saline before or you just observe that blood which is uh, going in. It can lead to nausea, vomiting and uh, even a vasovagal attack. Patients have been reported to develop myocardial infarctions, allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, tonic-clonic seizures, thrombophlebitis at the site of injection. It is not contraindicated in pregnancy but it is better to avoid especially so in the first trimester and you must keep our emergency kit ready. Thank you.